Okay, this is the last and final question from Fat March 2 1, paper 4 2. We are finally here. If you haven't done any question or you somehow stumble upon this video and you want to try out the whole paper first, please do so and come back and watch again. Video will be waiting for you. Okay, 12A. Radioactive decay is both spontaneous and random. State what is meant by spontaneous and random decay. So sometimes uh, when I think about this, um, random is something that I learned in probability. So when I say that the event is random means you don't know when it will happen. You cannot tell. Okay, so random here is unable to determine which nucleus will decay next. Let's say you have a sample of 1,000 nucleus. You don't know which one will decay. Could be this nucleus, could be this nucleus, or each nucleus have the same probability of decay. Okay, can refer to the notes or the video. Spontaneous means, I don't know, I can't make it happen even if I want to, it's spontaneous. So the rate of decay is independent of external factors. Independent to independent of the external environmental factors such as temperature and heat and pressure, all that don't care. All right. B. Strontium is unstable, and so are we. Activity of a sample of this much strontium, this is mass. And this is activity. There's a mega becquerel here. Determine the decay constant lambda of strontium 90. So uh, we should know that A is equal to lambda n. Okay, so your decay equations that you need to know is n is equal to n not e negative lambda t and a is equal to a not e negative lambda t because a is equal to dn over dt. You can watch the video where I derive this. And also a is equal to lambda n. Equations that you need to know lah. All right. And if you want to find lambda, lambda is ln 2 over half life. Need to know the proof. Okay, so I'm just going to directly use this one and not give myself headache. I have A, I can find lambda, but I need a value for the number of particles. Okay, this N here is the number of particles. How do we find the number of particles of a sample? This one. Number of particles. Look at this mass. Okay, look at this 90. This 90 is normally known as nucleon number or mass number or 90 gram per mole. So chemistry has uh, standardized their numbering such that when I see 90, oh, I know a lot of things. One, I know that there are 90 proton plus neutron inside the nucleus. I recall this the mass number as well because I know it has 90 gram for every mole. What is one mole? One mole is equivalent to N of Avogadro constant, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And this is 90 gram. So if 90 gram is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, then this many gram, now my M is 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 9 kg. This N is equal to what? This is your mole concept using ratio. 90 gram, so many particle. This much mass, how many particle? So we use ratio, okay? But I need to make sure the units are consistent. So I will convert kilogram to gram because I am a chemistry student So as well. So I, I know how to convert to gram. You can obviously convert gram to kg. You know what? We do that. Lah. Okay, so kg convert 90 here can be 90 kg so 90 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kg okay you happy now important thing is the units can cancel 
that's the important thing either convert kg to gram or convert gram to kg uh we're looking for n down here is n a Avogadro constant 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 it's okay to take your time but if you are you've done this like 4176 time in your chemistry syllabus then you can skip steps okay so if i press my calculator i got 6.69 times 10 to the power of 15 but let me double check okay i have to whack my calculator because no battery no battery low battery D E negative three times six zero two E twenty three. Yes, I get this many particles or nucleus of SR ninety. Okay, you can substitute already. Activity is five point two mega becquerel, so five point two times ten to the power of six. We're looking for lambda n is 6.69 times 10 to the power of 15. So it's okay to take your time and find n. If you know how to find n, you can immediately plug it in. No problem. Okay, so 5.2 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 6.69 times 10 to the power of 15. That would give me, oh, 7.77 .77 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Miss, is the unit SI? Yeah? Yes. Because, okay, number one, even if you don't convert a uh, kilogram to gram, or if you convert kilogram to gram, these two units will cancel out. It doesn't matter. So this thing is unitless. All right. Activity is in Becquerel. Becquerel BQ is SI. That means this one can maintain SI. All right. Okay. So, where are our marks and why is my pen not changing color? <laughs> okay, our marks are when you write A is equal to lambda N, you will get one mark. Okay, this is C1 probably. Okay, you find the number of nucleus and you substitute in, you will get C1. Okay, bring this one in here. They actually expect you to do this ratio inside here one. Okay, and the final answer is A1. All right, that's all. Next, part two. The activity of the sample after the time interval of one half life is found to be greater than the expected 2.6 mega becquerel. So half life uh, means you should take 5.2 divided by 2 is 2.6. So if the conditions are perfect, perfect condition. Let's say here is 5.2. I'm going to drop this way. When you drop to 2.6, here to here is one half life. 2.6 divided by 2 is 1.3. When you drop to 1.3, here to here is another half life. Okay? But the problem is, after one half life, oh, I don't get 2.6. Miss, how they calculate half life ah, eh? from lambda? No? Lambda is ln 2 over half life. They can find half life. So why is it more than... 2.6 that means there are other things that are radioactive what are the other things that can be radioactive uh background radiation there could be background radiation everything is radioactive la, to a certain extent so there's always background radiation even your banana sitting on the table will have its own background radiation so there's background what radioactive radiation Radiation. I could also say the product of the decay of your strontium 90 could be radioactive as well. So I'm not sure what decay strontium is going through and they didn't tell me also. But let's say this strontium-90 decay into nuclide X. And nuclide X can decay into nuclide Y. So this extra radioactivity is here. Because strontium-90 to X is 2.6. 2 
but x to y is some other thing so we add it on that's why it's greater okay so there could be background radiation or they also the product of the decay of the sr strontium 90 could be radioactive as well all right so this is a short question it's not very long which means there are things that they didn't ask you for example calculating half-life and they could also ask you to calculate the activity after a certain time so please make sure you track out those examples and that's it for question 12.